So the governor's released his May revise of the state budget. In there, there's funding for the California Earthquake Early Warning Program. What does this funding do? Yeah, this funding is actually uh, an augmentation uh, to what we've already been investing over the last number of years to the California Integrated Seismic Network. That's our network of sensors throughout California that allows us to determine where earthquakes occur and when they occur. Uh, and what this, this initial, this, this, this new slug of money that will give us is the ability to repurpose and build out on those sensors uh, a, a greater array of capability so that we can start sensing earthquakes prior to the shaking actually starting. And so we know that early warning means getting like a text message, something on your phone, I guess similar to an Amber Alert. But what's different about the early warning system? It's not as simple as just getting a text message. Right. So this is really important because people think that, you know, we, we can, you probably heard on the news, we know we have an, we have an earthquake early warning system. We, we've actually been working, and when I say we, and this is the scientific community, the, the private sector, government working together to really refine our technology and have the ability to, uh, to sense that initial or what they call primary wave of energy that is emitted when the ground shakes prior to the shaking actually happening. But this new technology with a reliable way can sense that, that primary wave and then, and then it would go through and be able to uh, then get it out to the public. And getting it out to the public means that it has to go through wireless networks, fiber networks, uh, uh, all different kinds of communications. So having that system in place uh, reliably has been a really big focus of ours. And, and so when ultimately we wanna make sure that every business, every citizen, when they get that alert, it is, they know that the earthquake is coming and then we want to then tie very strong public education and training to that that says, when I get that alert, what do we do? If you're an industry or a business, you may want to shut down your manufacturing line. If you're, you're, if you're on a train, you may want to slow the train down. But if you're a, a citizen, you may need to know, hey, I need to immediately drop cover and hold because the shaking is going to happen. Or I may want to um, slow my car, pull it off to the side of the road. So there'll be a series of actions that will be able to take place. In the past, you've mentioned that this early warning system is not just a government solution. You talk about the importance of private industry. Why are they important in this? Well, first of all, you know, 90% of the infrastructure is owned by the private sector in California, and they are a, a critical recipient of this warning. So when you think about power, water, electrical, medical, transportation, train service, uh, we're building a high-speed rail, um, all of these factors are really important to be able to build sustainability into those, those infrastructures. So when the earthquake happens, if say for example, um, uh, we can uh, have automatic shutoffs on the gas system. Uh, if you knew the shaking was coming, it was gonna be at the magnitude six or greater, and the alert went off, there could be automation set in place that would basically shut the gas off or slow the gas uh, production, which then reduces the number of fires, which ultimately, when the shaking stops, you have much less infrastructure damage or lives lost. So there's a series of things that can happen uh, from this, from, from the private sector side. They can benefit from making sure the employees are safe. They can benefit from making sure that their, their, the infrastructure that they've invested into remains intact. And they can also then get back up and operational after the earthquake has stopped to be able to get business going again as fast as possible. And there's been some comparisons made to other countries like Japan, Taiwan, Mexico, already having early warning systems. Is the California system different or similar to what they have? Well, there are some similarities, but, but, but you have to understand California is a very unique topography. First of all, we've got over 200 or so active earthquake faults in California, and they, they crisscross all over the state. Uh, we've got almost 40 million people, um, and we've got urban centers and rural communities. We have to take into account a very complex, very challenging set of, uh, of, of uh, demographics, of topography and geography to make sure that we build in a reliable system. So we've learned from what the Japanese have done. We've learned uh, what they've done in Mexico, but we also know that they have had what they call false positives or areas where they put a warning out um, and either, either it's not a legitimate warning or um, uh, they don't cover a particular area. We really can't have that here in California. Uh, public expects to have a, a confidence in their, in their warning system. And, and we at OES need to ensure that that, that system 
is completely reliable throughout the state. And there's been a lot of news stories talking about earthquake early warning. What would you say is the biggest misconception of an early warning system here in California? Well, if that it's a silver bullet that in some way uh, getting this warning is going to, you know, prevent uh, uh, life loss or building collapse or, or damage from the quake. The, the fact of the matter is, is that this is another tool in a variety of tools. Nothing is going to take the place of having a family plan, knowing to drop, cover, and hold, what to do when an earthquake, doing the earthquake preparedness things that you hear about all the time. Nothing will take the place of that. This will give you possibly a few seconds to up to 90 seconds, depending on where you are in relation to the actual rupture of the ground. It will give you some time to be able to put those actions into place. And uh, if you're an individual, if you had a few seconds and you knew an earthquake was coming to get under something heavy, protect yourself or your family, that would be a good thing to do. Um, if your industry, if it, you have an automated setup to be able to shut down gas or divert, uh, slow down trains automatically that are moving at a high rate of speed or divert aircraft landings, for example, or maybe a doctor who's about to do surgery, divert surgery, uh, or an alarm in a school goes off and the kids get under the desk. Those are all things that are going to be tangentially beneficial from this warning system. So as you can see, the, these have a lot of varying uh, 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 benefits, but it's not the silver bullet of it will take care of everything. Everyone still needs to be earthquake prepared and earthquake safe.